a couple years ago when I went down to downtown Atlanta with my producers and uh, as we were driving down there and she said, so what are we hoping to get? And I said, I, I don't know. I'm just going to ask people to, to talk, to talk about their community, to talk about what all this means. And I know there are a lot of corporate leaders out here and nonprofit leaders and elected officials and some of y'all I've interviewed and some of y'all I've fussed with and some of y'all don't like me, but that's all right. I love all y'all because everyone's got a different definition of what community is all about. You know, community is, is much more than just being local or, or hyper-local, national, global. It's who we are, right? No matter what your race, your ethnicity, whether you're vegan, I like barbecue, I get emails from vegan vegetarians you don't talk enough about, but I love it. Community is about who we are, and community is about being different, right? And embodied in that is how we treat each other. So whether you're a nonprofit or a Fortune 500 or somewhere in between, you have to understand what community means to you. Your mission, if you're a nonprofit, if you're offering a product or service, you may say, well, yeah, Rose, we're selling tires, so what does community mean to us? Community means a lot. But I think the problem is that everyone wants community to reflect what they personally feel it should be. And then therein lies the problem, right? So I've asked people, what is Atlanta's identity about its community? Because I think when you start talking about who we are as a community, you have to look at our identity. I don't know if we can really define Atlanta's identity yet. I remember having this conversation with Ryan Gravel, and I know y'all know Ryan, the architect of the Beltline. And he said to me, he said, you know, Rose, I, I think of Atlanta as like a, a gangly teenager still trying to find its way. I'm like, really? With all the history of Atlanta? Everyone's got a different definition of Atlanta's identity because that makes up the community, right? I found this on the, on the internet, because that's what we do, right? We always go to the internet. And it was interesting to me because it says that three dominant forces affecting Atlanta's history and development have been transportation, race relations, and that Atlanta spirit. And I thought, what is the Atlanta spirit? It goes back to what? Community and identity, right? So here's my question for all you leaders out there. And then if you're not in a leadership position, but whatever organization you work for, whatever space you're in, think about this. What is your identity? And why is it important? You don't have to answer that question now. You don't have to answer it tomorrow. But if you're not sure and you want to provide a service or you have a mission as a nonprofit, you better figure it out at some point. Is there a holistic approach to committing to whatever your identity is in your community? I can't tell you what it is. I tell people all the time, I can't tell you what to think or how to think. I just want you to think. People come on the show and they say, well, oh, how did I do? And I'm like, did you tell the truth? Or they say, well, what, what? I'm like, you don't have to answer any question you don't want to. You don't. You can sit there and in 20 minutes we just look at each other. But you need to have an approach. You need to have a holistic approach to whatever service, product, mission that you have as it relates to the community. You have to do that. At WABE, we've struggled with this. I don't know if my CEO is out here. Maybe the last time I'm on stage representing WABE, I don't know. But we have. We've struggled with what is our identity? And what is our commitment to the community that we serve? I, I'll be honest, I think for the first time we might be on that road to really fulfilling that. I'll look at Closer Look, the show that I host and I'm the executive producer for. And our team, they always ask me, well, Rose, what do you think people want to hear? And I was like, just ask them. Just ask them, which is why I tell people to email me every day. And they do, 3 o'clock in the morning, 
5 o'clock, yes, 3 o'clock in the morning. I get emails at 3 And you know what? I answer every one of them. Except for the people that ask me out on a date. I don't answer those. <laughs> it's happened. I appreciate it. It's just the love the love. But, you know, it's like, yeah, it's a little creepy. Um, but every conversation, every segment, every community segment that we have on our program is for a reason. And we hope that it's because we're communi communicating with our community. I did Johnny Isaacson's last interview before he passed away. I thought that was important to give him an opportunity to not only just talk about his four decades plus of being an elected official, but also to comment on the current climate of our political state. I love animals, so that's a picture of me with the horse. But what was neat about that, it was a, a equine therapy ranch that was helping kids and young adults deal with a, a, a variety of things. That's important for the community to know. Dr. Maria Karstarfin, who was the former APS superintendent, talking to her right after a cheating scandal, and I'm sure many of you know about the cheating scandal, talking to her about coming in as a school chief to deal with that, giving her an opportunity to lay out her vision. Nobody had asked. Often we hear people in sound bites and clips but the community deserves better than that. These are people that you all hold responsible, right? Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms, former mayor. I said, hey, let's just talk. How come you're not running? Let's just sit down and talk. And that's what I did. T.I. Clifford Harris. I remember when T.I. was about 17, 18 years old, trying to hawk his CDs with his little backpack at run and shoot. Hey, Ms. Lady, you gonna buy my CDs? I'm like, nah, you got a lot of cussing in there. I can't take that home to my family. Come on, man. But I knew he had a story. It's not my job to put my voice over his story. So I let him talk. Got in the car. We rode around Atlanta. It was hot. No seat belts. I'm like, tip, where are the seat belts? Air conditioning wasn't working. But I wanted him to tell his story about a 15, 16-year-old kid selling drugs because there were no lights on at the house. I'm not condoning that behavior, but I wanted him to tell his story. He said, never had opportunity. People ask us, well, how do you know if something is going to work? How do you know that's what the community wants to hear? And this is what I challenge my producers. Number one, is it relevant? Are we telling something new? Who are the voices? I just had this conversation backstage with someone. I don't subscribe to, oh, Rose Scott is the voice for the voiceless. No, 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 no. I want to give them a platform to use their voice. I don't believe in the pain, I don't believe in profiting off the pain and suffering of people of color or other marginalized communities. I'm here to curate conversations and give them a platform. That's my job. That's my commitment to the community that I serve. Is it timely? Well, now everyone's talking about politics. Somebody's going to be talking about politics forever. But I know that's what people want to talk about. But I always challenge my producers, let's give the community something different. Let's peel back the layers. Let's take it a little bit further. And let's not ask the same people the same damn questions. I do not ask people of color how they feel about racism. I know how they feel. <laughs> and we didn't create the problem. So I'm not asking black folks how they feel about racism. That's not what the community wants to hear. Because I hope that the listener, whatever that takeaway is from the listener, because I'm not I'm not saying we have to be advocates. I'm saying that we have to be advocates for people to take that information and do something with it. And it's the same commitment, I think, as leaders in your spaces, wherever that space is, you have to do the same thing. Ask about your same mission. Are we relevant? Are we telling something new? Are we trying to help somebody different? That's what you need to do. And who are the voices? 
don't send your new diversity and inclusion officer <laughs> to the black community just because they're a person of color. If you're going to be in the community, be in the community. And don't just drop in when something bad happens. If you're going to be in the community, be about the community and talk to them. Why are these stories important again? And why is it important for you all to think about your space, wherever you are? Because it's about community, right? Are you relevant? Something else I want to throw in there, it's, it's not in this slide, but I just want to talk about what diversity for a second, because I know since the last couple years, everybody's all about DEI and diversity, and that's great, but it seems like everybody wants diversity on their own terms, right? We got a checklist. We got a black person, got an Asian person, we got this person. That's not, diversity is more than just people. Diversity is in thought and process and collaboration. Diversity is a mindset. I've been saying this, I think a lot of people got woke in 2020, and now some of them sleep. So I need to wake up of that. Now, how do we measure the impact of what we do? I can't tell you how to measure the impact of what you all do. You have to figure that out. But as far as WABE and Closer Look, I can tell you. Because when I arrived in 2007, and some lady left a voicemail saying, is that Rose Scott, your new urban reporter? Yeah, that's a change, right? You know, I told him, you have to cover stories outside of North Atlanta. You have to go to the west side. You have to cover the HBCUs. You need to cover the rural population. And yeah, our newsroom was growing. You have to do this. They made a commitment. We've come a long way. When I got to the newsroom, there was three people in there. And me. We've come a long way. We've still got a long way to go. We've come a long way. And we can measure our impact with the demographics of our listenership. I think when I got there, our black listenership was 6%. I think now it's 35%. You're welcome, thank you. <laughs> and we're skewing a little bit younger, which is okay, you know. Public radio is not just for people who like classical music. You know, I mean, I like Bach and Beethoven, but I listen to Tupac as well. A little bit of Nina Simone, some Zeppelin, you know. That's how we measure, and the feedback. The good, the bad, the challenging. I'll, I'll never forget getting an email, a, a voicemail from a woman using the N-word. Calling me, calling me the N-word, and it was not nice. And, and, and fussing about, is, is WABE now an in-run station? That's what she said. And she would call every day while I was on the air and leave a voicemail. And I let it go for a, a while, but it, it was when she called our switchboard, and the young man that was answering the phone, the young brother named Javon, and he, he really, she really upset him. And that's when I said, okay, we gotta find out who she is. Found out, got her number, called her back, you know me. <laughs> Hello. I, Yes, we got her name, too. I said, is, we'll call her Nancy. See, I didn't say Karen, because y'all would have had a fit. <laughs> we'll call her Nancy. Says, hey, is Nancy there? Yes. This is Rose Scott. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> she said, I kid you not, you're my favorite racist. I said, would you like a pair of socks and a WABE mug? <laughs> we ship them out right to you. And she hung up. Never heard from her again. She's still part of the community. But I use that metric as part of our, as our, as our feedback in terms of, you know, are we doing something right? Are we doing something wrong? You know what? We're reaching the community. 
and I get one of those a year, I'm good. That's all right. What is the identity of your organization? You may have the answer, you may not, I don't know. But I hope the takeaway is that how you present yourself in the community is so important. If you're a nonprofit and you have a mission, how you tell your story to the community is so important. You don't have to come on Closer Look and get an interview with Rose. Or can Rose come out and do a feature on us? Yeah, I've, I've done that. Because there are a lot of great organizations in this city. Let's be really clear. There are some wonderful organizations in this city doing some wonderful work. And I'm proud to profile them. And I don't get paid to do that. They don't give, I might get a shirt from them or something like that. But I say no more than I say yes. But there are some wonderful organizations that y'all don't know nothing about. But they struggle with telling their story to the community. They've got to figure that out. And then where are you telling that story? If you go to the same event and you go to the same place where everybody hangs out and you tell the story, you're not, you're not doing yourself a service. You've got to go to the community that you want to serve. You've got to do that. And then be authentic. Be relevant. And at the same time, listen. Listen to the community. I do it every day. Don't tell people what you think they want to hear. Listen to them. So, well, your Fortune 500, nonprofit, somewhere in between. You need, to re you need to evaluate that. And perhaps what you got going on is great. Then nothing what I just said the last 19 minutes means anything. That's wonderful. But if you think now is the time to maybe reevaluate your mission, your vision, how you all are showing up in the community, now's the time to do it, right? That's what it's all about. Because no matter what you do, no matter what service you provide, no matter what product, no matter what your mission is, somehow it has to connect to the community, right? Somehow. So think about that. And then send me an email and we'll talk about it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>